lab is a basic lab on testing solubility using ionic aqueous solutions. We are going to check the solubility rules to test what precipitates form and then we're going to balance the chemical equations and identify the precipitate and the aqueous solutions. By combining one drop of each aqueous solution on a white square and on the black square, we are going to be able to identify which solutions, when combined in a double replacement reaction, will form precipitates. We are testing the solutions on both white and black backgrounds because sometimes the precipitate cannot be seen against the white background. White precipitate against a white background would be difficult to see, but by placing it on both the white and black backgrounds, it will allow us to see the precipitate's form more clearly. Be careful not to put too large a drop because then the drops will fuse together. It's uh, much easier to see the precipitate forming against the background when the drops are separated. Notice we have very clear precipitates forming with barium hydroxide, potassium chloride, and the sodium carbonate. We are reminded that precipitates form whenever the solutions are insoluble and we follow the solubility rules. For instance, nitrates are almost always soluble. Sulfates are almost always sol soluble. Carbonates, however, are pretty much insoluble. A hydroxide is insoluble except in certain cases like with barium or with calcium or when they're with the alkali metals. Alkali metals are almost always soluble. When you write out your balanced chemical equations for these ionic aqueous solutions, all of the reactants will be aqueous. Those that form precipitates are going to have the S signification for solid, while the other reactant will be the aqueous solution. Please check your solubility rules to determine which of the reactants um, and products are going to be solids as precipitates and which will remain aqueous in solution. For double replacement reactions, you're reminded that the positive ion from the first reactant will always recombine with the negative ion from the second reactant, and the positive ion from the second reactant should combine with the negative ion from the first reactant. Remember, the positive ions will repel each other, and the negative ions will repel each other as well. Make sure your charges are balanced as you balance your chemical equations.
So looking at the solubility rules, remember that compounds containing the following ions are generally soluble in water. That would be the alkali metals, especially as ions, and the ammonium ions, so Li plus 1, Na plus 1, K plus 1, NH4 plus 1. The acetate ion, C2H3O2 as a negative 1 ion. The nitrate ions, NO3 negative 1. The halide ions are the halogens, so Cl negative 1, Br negative 1, I negative 1, except when they are with silver, and mercury, or lead. And then the sulfate ions, the SO4 negative 2, and the insoluble exceptions for that are strontium and barium and lead. Compounds containing the following ions are generally insoluble in water. The carbonate ion, CO3, negative 2. The exception is when it is with uh, the rule 1 elements, which would be the alkali metals and the ammonium ion. Chromate ion, CrO4, negative 2, also has a rule 1 exception, so when it is with alkali metals and the ammonium ion, you will see it as being soluble. Phosphate ion, PO4-3, also has a negative one, or the rule one exception. The sulfide ion, S-2, the exceptions are when it's with calcium, strontium, or barium, and the rule one exception. And the hydroxide ion, OH-1, except for when it's with calcium, strontium, barium, or also the rule one exception for alkali metal ions and the ammonium ion.